and maybe we are thinking of the same word. Wow. What an oath. What a commitment to call upon God Himself to punish you and then double it if you fail at it. An oath in which Ruth was saying, this is how it's going to be for the rest of my life. Wow. But if we do some digging into the, the context and the background of this oath, of, of these words, they become even more amazing. The person Ruth originally spoke these words to was an Israelite woman named Naomi. And Naomi was married to an Israelite man named Elimelech. And it just so happened that while Naomi and Elimelech were living down in Judah, by Bethlehem, there was a famine in Israel, and there was no food available, and so those two made the move with their family over to a country that is just south, was just southeast of Israel, just across the Dead Sea, Moab. It was Elimelech and Naomi, and they had two sons, Malin and Kilian. Well, sadly, as a little time passed, Elimelech died and went to heaven, leaving Naomi a widow. But all was not lost for Naomi because she still had her two sons who could then support her. And those two sons of hers ended up marrying women from Moab, Moabite women. One was named Orpah, not Oprah, Orpah. And the other was named Ruth. Well, not much time passes after that. And both of Naomi's sons, Malin and Killian, also died. So not only are Orpah and Ruth widows, now Naomi is both a widow and childless. She has no support system whatsoever. It was at that point where she said, I should probably move back home. After all, she had heard that God was providing food in Israel once again. The famine was over. And initially, Orpah and Ruth both wanted to go with their mother-in-law. But here's what Naomi said to them. Go back, both of you. Return to your mother's house. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to the dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you find security in the house of a husband. And so you can see what Naomi's thinking. These, these two young ladies have their whole lives yet ahead of them. Chances are very good for them to, to meet somebody else and get married again and, and, and have families of their own. And isn't that kind of mind-blowing? I mean, here, here in this particular situation where Naomi would, justify, would be kind of justified in, in thinking about how all the, all the trials and, and all the challenges she was facing in that moment, but what she is thinking about when these two Moabite women offer to go with her and help support and care for her, she's thinking about what's going to be best for them. Kind of speaks to the kind of believer that Naomi was. Well, eventually, after some additional persuading, Orpah is convinced, and she decides to, to stay back in Moab, but not Ruth. Ruth was undeterred. She was going to go with her mother-in-law, even though those familial ties technically were no longer there. She was going to go back to Israel. You think about all the all the unknowns that Naomi and now Ruth were facing. What's going to happen? Think about all the unknowns for Ruth. 
am I going to be provided for? What's life going to be like living in a, in a foreign land where, where the only person that I know is Naomi? Am I going to be able to live the life I want to live? Am I going to find a husband in Israel? Am I still going to be able to have a family? All these questions, all these uncertainties, and all of them kind of reasons for Ruth to stay back in Moab where she was familiar with everything, where she had grown up, where she knew everything. But overriding all of that was Ruth's love for her mother-in-law. She didn't know what was going to happen, but one thing she didn't know, she loved Naomi. And so she made that beautiful vow Where you go, there I'm going to go. Where you make your home, I'm going to make mine. Your people, the Israelites, they're going to be my people now. And your God is my God too. Wherever you die, there I'm going to die too. And I'm going to be buried right there as well. No taking my body back to Moab. No, I'm going to be buried with you. May the Lord deal with me ever so severely. May he double that punishment. If anything but death separates you from me. Wow. What a commitment. So how can she make it? How can Ruth make a commitment like that? How can she be so determined and have such strength to follow through on her oath by faith. We've kind of seen evidence in the story of of Naomi and Ruth so far, haven't we? Evidence of the fact that Ruth has that faith because of the witness of Naomi and probably because of the witness of her now late husband Killian. And God had worked through that witness to to put saving faith, faith in the true God in Ruth's heart. After all, Ruth knows his name. And she addresses him by name. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely. And now that faith, planted through the... Planted by the work of God, the Holy Spirit, using the agency of the witnesses of of Naomi and Killian. Now that faith expresses itself so beautifully and so powerfully and so profoundly in that vow. Yes, Ruth was committed. Committed in faith. Brothers and sisters, how is your commitment? How easy for it is, how easy is it for us, I should say, to express a very sincere commitment to, to loving God above all else and to loving our neighbor as ourselves, but how easy it is that that commitment grows cold. What does it say about the state of my commitment? When I can say that, yes, I'm going to love God above all else, but then something else gets in the way of me loving God above all else, something like something I want, a desire of mine, a goal I have, a desire I have no matter how fleeting or shallow or temporary it is. What does it say about the state of my commitment when I so easily harbor a grudge and refuse to let go and forgive somebody who has wronged me, whether intentionally or not? What does it say about the state of my commitment when I see a need, a need in my house, a need out in everyday life, a need in my church, a need that I can meet, but I come up with every sort of excuse under the sun I have too little time, I have too little opportunity, I have too little energy, I have too little this, I have too little that, and maybe, just maybe, maybe the thing that we have too little of is commitment. Commitment. 
And so for those of us who find our commitment to be lacking, let's turn our attention to the one who is the epitome of commitment. And that would be our gracious God because he did not leave Ruth and Naomi high and dry in their commitment to one another. No, God granted that after Ruth and Naomi moved back to Israel that they would be provided for, provided for through a man named Boaz. And God also granted that Ruth would get married to Boaz so that Ruth would be provided for and Naomi would be provided for in abundance. And God also granted that Ruth and Boaz would have a son named Obed. And God also granted that Obed would have a son named Jesse, and God also granted that Jesse would have a son named David. You see, in God providing in God being committed to Ruth and Naomi, God was also demonstrating his commitment to us because through them, ultimately, God provides us with the human ancestry of our promised Savior. If you want to know the measure of God's commitment to you, you need look no further than a manger in Bethlehem. You need look no further than a cross outside Jerusalem. That is the measure of God's commitment to you. He gives what is most precious to him, his son. He gives his son to us and for us. How committed is God to you and me? He forgives our lack of commitment fully, freely, and graciously, and in Jesus' resurrection commits to us the very kingdom of heaven. Talk about commitment. And so in view of that commitment, brothers and sisters, as we wait for our Lord Jesus to return, we recommit ourselves to loving our God above all things and to loving one another as ourselves. Yes, in view of Jesus' selfless sacrifice for our salvation, we recommit to serving, to serving our God and serving one another, not just with words, but with deeds. In view of Jesus' full and free forgiveness, we recommit to fully and freeing fully and freely forgiving one another whatever grievances we may have against each other in view of Jesus giving his all for us we recommit to giving our all for him our time our talents our abilities our skills our very lives that they may be used to his glory yes as we wait for Jesus we do so following the example of Ruth. Committed in faith. Faith that shows itself in action. Amen.